here's an update on the spruce collection. Starting off with Li Jiang spruce. This is my little one, and it lost new growth due to a late frost, and it's already putting out new growth here, uh, a second round of new growth in uh, mid-May. So that's good news. The Li Jiang spruce can bounce back from early frost damage. Moving on. Here's the Korean spruce and it put on a lot of new growth. It looks like about three to four inches of vertical growth. Uh, this went in the ground last fall, I believe, so this is the first growing season here. Um, actually, this may have gone in the ground in the spring, so maybe the second growing season. Anyway, Korean spruce doing very well. Here's the purple cone spruce, which I've had in the ground for about maybe three years now. Putting on its reliable two to three inches of growth a year. Not outstanding, but definitely speeding up from where it started. So I'm still very positive on the purple cone spruce. And this is the Chihuahuan spruce, which really looks like a Colorado blue spruce, but it's not. And for whatever reason, the vertical growth has not been spectacular. It's just starting this year, so maybe this later will push up higher, but it is putting on growth pretty much everywhere. I don't think it really suffered much bud damage at all during the extreme cold. So Chihuahuan spruce still looking good. And here's the much larger Lijiang spruce that I have. It's been in the ground for, I guess, three or four years now. Putting up a nice replacement vertical leader for the one that was lost due to the extreme cold. You can see there the original vertical leader was lost. And looks like this would be the new one, which is once again great. Um, as I showed, well, maybe I didn't show this. There was a little bud damage on the Lijiang spruce. So uh, more bud abortion than normal. But as you can see from the fullness of this new growth, that really didn't affect anything in the long run, I don't think. So I'm um, still very positive on the Lijiang spruce. And I'm guessing that last winter's extreme cold was just about the worst that Tennessee can throw at it, so from a cold hardiness standpoint, I think it's still a thumbs up on the Lijiang spruce. And obviously from a um, summer humidity hardiness, it's already proven itself multiple times. Now actually I have two purple cone spruces, by the way, um, Picea purpurea is the Latin name, in case you're not sure what I'm talking about. And uh, this one I purchased from WilsonBrothersGardens.com. I was surprised to see uh, such a rare spruce on that site, but uh, when I did, I immediately picked it up, and I did not regret, because it's very large, actually. It's now one of the, uh, I guess, the middle of the pack in terms of spruces that I have. This just went in the ground um, about a month ago, and it's uh, so far looking really good. It was already sprouting new growth when it arrived, and it's continued to do so. It looks like the uh, main apical bud here uh, focus. There we go. Was lost, but it's putting out these three new sprouts at the top, and I'm assuming one will become the new leader. And of course, if they all do, I'll have to trim it. But it is putting on new growth, and yeah, purple cone spruce still available at WilsonBrothersGardens.com if you want to try one. And I showed you earlier the one that's been on the ground here three or four years, and so far I have not had any problems with it from uh, central China, actually south central China, I believe. Here's my largest Black Hills spruce, uh, which you will remember is a uh, cultivar of white spruce, Picea glauca. And it doesn't go too vertical from year to year either. It looks like there was some bud loss. I don't know why that would be, because this would be a super cold hardy, maybe the most cold hardy of all the spruces that I have in the collection. But it's uh, definitely getting larger over the years. This has probably been in the ground now for six years, maybe. It started off as one of the little ones you buy at Lowe's. Actually, a very small one. Even the ones they have at Lowe's are bigger than this now. So it's continued to grow. Now, I did lose one to something. I mean, maybe it could have survived if I had been more patient, but I think spider mites or something had gotten it. But this one still going strong. And here's another Black Hill spruce that I just purchased this spring, and it's already putting on fantastic vertical growth. 
and I purchased that because I did have good experience with my other Black Hill spruces, so I think white spruce is pretty resilient to moist environments. You know, contrast that with the uh, Colorado blue spruce, which they were selling right next to it on the shelf at Lowe's, and the Colorado blue spruce, as I've discussed many times, is very susceptible to all different types of fungus, so this is what I got instead. And I would encourage you to get Black Hill spruce instead of Colorado blue spruce. Here's the Serbian spruce, which has been a very reliable grower over the years in the collection here. I did have apical bud loss this winter. I don't know if that was due to cold or something else. I mean, this kind of thing happens regularly, regularly with spruces around here. So, but uh, one of these other sprouts that are going vertical here will have to take over and be the new leader after the growing season is over. But Serbian spruce, still doing good. I read online where someone had trouble with them, but I haven't had any trouble with Serbian spruce. It's been one of the most reliable spruces. And this is just the regular straight species Serbian spruce. I know there are different cultivars. This one came from uh, naturehills.com, I believe. Here is a Picea orientalis, the oriental spruce, which I will remind you is from the extreme southern region, regions of uh, Caucasus. Um, here's the Black Sea, southern Russia, uh, nation of Georgia, northeastern Turkey. Check out that vertical leader growth there. It has also been extremely reliable. I have three of these. This is the Atrovirens <clears throat> cultivar of oriental spruce, which I ordered online from Monrovia and had it, had it delivered to a local nursery. I know there are a million different cultivars of this. Usually you see the yellow ones, but this is the regular green one. And it's been extremely reliable. This is the tiger tail. Yeah, I think it's called tiger tail. The uh, Picea polita cultivar is Torano. So it's a Japanese spruce. And I think I may have commented in the past just about how stiff the needles are on this spruce. It's extremely stiff needles, but uh, it's late to break bud every year, which is a really good thing. So it always avoids frost damage. But it seems to be extremely sturdy. And Wilson spruce, a very reliable grower as well, from central China. The Myers spruce has had mixed results over the years, but I continue to leave it in the ground just as an experiment. So Picea myeri, you see it online sometimes, but I wouldn't put too much faith in it if I were you. And the Qinghai spruce, Picea cassifolia, putting on more vertical growth this year. It's also had some uh, bud loss, but it seems to overcome that with pretty vigorous growth. And last but not least, the Koyama spruce, Picea koyamae. I got this from now there was a plane going over. I got this from uh, conifercingdom.com. It is grafted onto what I assume is Norway spruce rootstock, but there are no problems with apical dominance. As you can see, it's uh, sprouting from the very top. I don't know why, but uh, this one broke bud down low way earlier than the top did, but who really cares? As long as it eventually gets up here and breaks bud and goes vertical, I will be satisfied and it looks like it's going to do just that. So, Koyama spruce. This is the Budgeberry Blue cultivar of Koyama spruce, which as far as I can tell doesn't have any unusual um, weeping tendencies or unusual coloration other than it's somewhat blue and cast. So I would uh, recommend it. I know the description on Conifer Kingdom is a little bit vague about what exactly it is and the pictures aren't that great, but here's a better view of what one looks like after it's already put on growth at the bottom and still putting on growth at the top. So Koyama spruce, I'm starting to become a fan of it. From Japan, by the way. Oh, I was wrong, there are more spruces. This is the Norway spruce Finidonensis cultivar, which I showed you earlier, I believe, in a different video, and it doesn't really have too much yellow coloration I know that's what this cultivar is known for. It could be because I've got it in a mostly shady, well, partial shade. 
light shade is what we'd call it. There's nothing directly above it, but it really only gets direct sunlight mornings and evenings. Um, I've just got it back here in my area where I store my uh, other things that need to go in the ground. So Norway spruce, Finidonensis, doing well. Seeing that little Norway spruce made me realize I didn't even show you my big Norway spruces. These things are getting huge. I'm guessing they're all about 10 feet now or more. Probably been in the ground for seven years, approaching seven years. And they were already uh, three feet tall when I purchased them from a local nursery store as quote unquote living Christmas trees. They had been sheared and obviously I uh, did not shear them whatsoever, but that doesn't matter because as you can see, they keep that classic conical growth pattern, even if you don't shear them. A little bit crazy sometimes at the top with weird branches, but for the most part, very reliable. Really cool though, the uh, the Norway spruces, I have a planting of six of them here in a row and um, three others spread out in different spots, plus the little Phenodinensis one. And uh, I think I only lost one to something that probably could have been root rot or it could have been something with the needles because it was growing under a hackberry and <clears throat> in case you don't know, hackberries cause sooty mold to grow on whatever is underneath them, which probably wasn't ideal. So uh, that hackberry was chopped down, but I think the damage was already done. But check out the Norway spruce, it's really crazy growth on a few of them. I'm assuming they'll straighten up though. I guess I could trim them if necessary, but I'm really am not planning to do that. There was one that had two liters and I got rid of the other liter. Pretty thick growth. I mean, you can have a screen made out of Norway spruce if you plant them thick enough. These are pretty close. And mine is more of a forest planting. They're not they're not spaced out to where each one is a specimen tree. They're, there's space between them, maybe, I don't know, six to seven feet. And obviously a Norway spruce can get much larger than that, but this is like a dense forest planting where uh, the goal is mainly vertical growth, not horizontal.